Now here we have a method, or my method, of turning these uh, big end bearings. I use the, the lathe, the engine lathe. And uh, in previous videos I've showed you how to, we were extended the rod and we were going to turn the, we turned the, um, the gudgeon pin and we put it on a, on a frame here, on a fixture, and we held it here, bridge, a bridge clamp across the, um, across the part here to hold it in place, and we bored the gudgeon pin. Now we can use the same fixture. I've just taken the, the bridge clamping mechanism off it, and if you haven't, uh, if you don't need to turn your gudgeon pins, well, you can just make one up. And all it is, is just a piece of flat bar that you get from your, your local steel supplier. I've got a collar there that, that's a tight fit into the centre, and that runs true when this is, when this is uh, connected to the lathe. It's got three dowel pins here, and that's connected, nice face there, and it runs dead true, very true. So we know that's just going to slip on the lay. And we just put that collar on, I've tack welded it on the middle there. It's a nice tight fit there, and a couple of drilled holes. In this case they're half inch or 12 millimeter, fairly substantial. And I've set it up and I bored the centre there. I drilled a hole and I bored a 20 mil. That was just to assist me in setting up. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up at the right centre distance here um, that we required. And in this particular case, it's 200 millimetres. Now, I went and got a bit of stock bar, a bit of rubbish, a bit of uh, scrap bar, and I turned up this collar spigot here. And all it is is the same size as the, um, as the gudgeon pin. It's tightly in there. Flange on the end here. And I turned it in the one operation. That is, I turned this and then I turned the face here. So that when I put that down flat on there, that is perfectly perpendicular. Okay, I set it back in the lathe in the three jaw chuck and I relieved the centre and tapped it 3 8 Whitworth. Okay, now because I'd been turning this end here, I'd already had this end set up at 200 millimetres. So what I did, I put the point of my tool on that when it was in the lathe and I swung it round and I scribed the line here which is 200 millimetres, the same as the, the gudgeon pin here. But if I didn't have that, all I would need to do, because I bored that hole there, uh, 10 millimetres to the centre of that hole there, 200 millimetres, 190 millimetres here, 190, set it to there. I can very carefully put it on there, and there's the radius there. Alright, I can mark that out. And I centre punched it, and I drilled it three eight, a 3 8 hole there. And that's going to take a bolt. Alright, not much clearance there, no clearance. And that'll fit on there, and that'll hold that down 200 millimetres to the centre of the lathe. Now you can see the system. I now put that on there. That set the distance up. I can set a bridge clamp up towards the centre there. And I've got to move it, swing it this way to get it in the centre. I know it's central this way. I can tighten this up here. Put a couple of tacks on this. Get that down firmly. Tighten it up here. Put my bridge clamp across here, and I know that that is set up exactly 200 millimetres from the centre. And of course I put the next rod on, and I know it's exactly the same. And the next one, and the next one. So i got all my rods exactly right, even if I'm a little bit out, it doesn't matter. I've got them all the same. Alright? So let's set it up. First of all, we put that through there and tighten that up. 
there it is, it's sitting tight down on there. Bit of an overkill, the spanner, but never mind. That's okay. I take that off, and I now take it over to my welder, and I'll give it a couple of tacks there and there. I don't really want to tack it there because that tends to test it up. Not that it would, I don't think it would bend that metal, but it may. If I tack it there and there, then it shouldn't give you any twist on the bar. So there we have it. We welded that on or tacked that on in place. That's now secure. While I was there, I had this piece of 25mm square, the base of the bridge uh, plate, and I just tacked it in place too. And all we have to be careful of there is when we assemble it, we just sit there, we just have that fairly close to the, the action up this end here where we're going to turn. And the size of that bridge plate is important. All we need to do is make sure that we've got enough room there to put the verniers underneath there so that we can get a, a distance on that uh, across those two flats there because that's got to be about five thousand of an inch clearance in there when we, we final assemble it. Um, while it was there I cut the a little scallop out of the dowel there or the thing there just to take the the bolt and forget that's got to go in there because that's, I forget that's in the, the actual gudgeon pin. Okay, so that goes down there. Bridge plate goes on so. And we'll do a final tighten with that once we get it on the lathe. The un the final thing is to put in the two bolts underneath to hold it down. They just go through the back there. And we're ready to go put it on the lathe to do a final check and, and tighten up. Now as I've said before, I use this method on the lathe because it seems to be a lot quicker than any other method that, uh, that I've seen. Um, it, it's, it's also important to do it on the lathe, or I like to do it on the lathe because the lathe seems to be the machine that's accessible to most people. As I've said before, Lays have never been cheaper than have they are now. You know, I leave this length here on here with the weight on here because we, in some cases, in some lays, we need to be able to balance it. If you had an old lay, for instance, with a, a white metal or bronze bearing, bearing in the headstock, then we would have to balance this up because if we had it um, unbalanced, spinning around, then it would spin out of true and we would get ovality in the bearing. Um, I'm not going to worry about it on my lathe because it's got a roller bearing headstock and, and it wouldn't get any movement anyway. We're not going to run it at a great speed. But this method of using this is, uh, seems to be the, uh, the easiest way of setting it up. It's just a matter of unbolting this when you're finished and storing it away and writing on here what it's for. Um, normally I don't use this line to do this sort of work. I have a much bigger um, face plate of my Takasawa lathe. I'll show it to you. Watch this. Here we have the setup I usually use for the connecting rods. Uh, it is a face plate of my Takasawa lathe and I've bolted a piece of 12mm plate containing the spigots 
uh, etc to the surface. Uh, I've um, turned the plate to the right diameter so the same as the face plate and I've welded a spigot on the back of the plate which aligns with the hole in the center of the surface plate so if I take that off if I remove the four screws and put on another plate which I have three of the same similar then it always goes back in a fairly um, um, precise manner, precision manner. On the surface you can see the gudgeon pin dowels set up for different vehicles. Uh, there's a range of engines there from Austin to Wolseley, Model T Fords, Willys Knights etc. All that I've done. All I do is set it up in the lathe and weld the bridging block the bridging block there, I can cut that off and, and weld it in the right position so that I can clamp the, the rod to the centre there successfully. And away we go there. I've done hundreds in, of uh, connecting rods this way and it is very economical. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go back to our lathe and set up for our Flanders connecting rod.